This is going to cost people their lives. This is an emergency. A Mid-South woman so afraid, she says she called the police on her grandmother's nursing home. What happened next left the family with more questions than answers. And as WREG investigators Annette Lowe uncovered, the facility is one of many that broke the rules, yet still reaped additional rewards. Pretty out here today, though, isn't it? You want to just sit right here? Okay. When you lose a loved one, the milestones passed without them tend to leave more of a mark. You had a birthday since last time that we were here and seen her. Moments Monica Weber reminds her young daughter they can forever share. Well, we love you, Mama. Very, very, very much. Weber's grandmother, Joyce Stafford, died June 18th, 2020. I'm at peace that she's not suffering, but what remains is accountability, resolution. Stafford, blind and bedridden, was a resident at Diversicare of South Haven and one of the first at the facility to die from COVID. The virus has now killed a total of 22 residents. The nursing home drew scrutiny from federal regulators and families questioning whether it failed to prevent residents from being exposed to COVID. When you're in a position to care for elders, you should do everything by the book and above, and it simply was not done. About a month after Stafford died, the National Guard conducted mass testing at Diversicare South Haven, but records show the administrator didn't get the results until being prompted by state surveyors who showed up for an inspection and complaint investigation three weeks after the testing was done. It's just a, it's a bad situation. You think of what were they hiding? What what was the reasoning in all of this? The administrator, who according to surveyors, walked around maskless and didn't stay socially distant while they were on site, said of the test results, it doesn't matter anyway. We are past our 14 days, so I'm not worried. Diversicare placed him on leave. The nursing home was cited with one of the most serious deficiencies possible and fined more than $80,000 after those surveyors got the test results and learned two employees were COVID positive and working, interacting with residents and other employees. And then to read facts after all this that have come to light, um, you know, employees admitting, hey, we did have symptoms, we still went to work. These, these elders were exposed. Um, you go from being hurt to angry. But after being fined by federal regulators, our investigation shows the government turned around and rewarded Diversicare South Haven. Wow, that's news to me. This is what they got. Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing, yet disgusted. Like other industries hit hard by the pandemic, nursing homes got a boost from the federal government in the form of relief funds. Some of that money, incentive payments for facilities that could show lower infection and mortality rates. The money could be used for staffing, testing, and infection control programs. Diversicare of South Haven got more than $400,000, the most sent to any facility in Mississippi. And Diversicare South Haven is far from alone. We found hundreds of Mid-South nursing homes that had deadly outbreaks and were fined for either infection control or COVID, yet they collected extra cash. In fact, the News Channel 3 investigators found more than 80 Arkansas nursing homes that received incentive payments and were also hit with a COVID or infection control penalty. That's nearly 45% of all the facilities that received payments. I don't know where it is that, you know, you could have a, a bad performance in your job, so to speak, and yet you get to take home the bonus payment at the end of the year. Brian Lee runs the advocacy group Families for Better Care. When you see those facilities that were fined and then they received bonus payments and there's that erosion of, a, of enforcement, it's just really a slap in the face to the, the residents who live, live there. It's a slap in the face to the families who have loved ones in these facilities where, they're at, where they had serious outbreaks and deaths. I want answers for that as a taxpayer. I, I, I want to know why. So did the News Channel 3 investigators. So we went to the people handing out the money, a division of Health and Human Services, which also houses the agency in charge of the fines. When asked if infection control and violation history was considered when doling out incentive payments, a spokesperson said nursing homes were checked for active certifications and against CDC quality checks. He added, facilities must also comply with strict standards in how they use the money. Those that don't may have to pay it back. This is unacceptable. Very. 
Oh, yes, ma'am. Very much. Diversicare of South Haven was fined again in February after surveyors once again found workers not properly wearing face masks. They called it a repeated deficient practice. If you allow something to keep happening over and over again um, and them getting away with it, then what's going to happen? They're going to feel like they're not going to have to be held accountable or responsible, and it's going to continue. Weber's grandmother may be gone, but she says she refuses to let her story die. She's always with us, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. We uncovered a lot more that you can see at WREG.com, including several Mid-South nursing homes whose penalty was actually bigger than their incentive payment, plus the multiple Memphis facilities that were fined for not submitting weekly COVID data, which, by the way, is one of the basic requirements to even get the extra cash. Zanetta Lowe, WREG News Channel 3. Diversicare wouldn't provide an interview or comment for this story. We have learned the administrator who was on the job last year at the South Haven facility is no longer there. As far as how it used that extra money, the publicly traded company said in federal filings it was closely tracking its use of funds to demonstrate compliance. Now, September 30th marked one of the first deadlines for nursing homes to report how they use some of their federal relief money, but receipts for those incentive payments are not due until next year.